Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome to Australia. Yes, it is finally time to build the Australian area at San Bernardino Zoo. And we're going to be building it here, right next to the water terraces. This is going to be one of the entrance areas to the zoo. Today, we're going to be building the entrance to the Australian area and adding our first couple of animals. Let's get building. I have been planning this area for so long. So while I lay out the entrance, sit back, relax, grab your snacks, and I'll tell you the story of how this area came to be. So those of you who've seen my Tecton Zoo series will know that for various reasons, there were pretty much no Australian animals in that zoo. And for the longest time, my plan for the next zoo that I did after Tecton's zoo was Tecton Australia, a Australian zoo pretty much entirely focused on Australian animals that would be entirely built in the Tecton style. Um, but by the time I got to the end of Tecton Zoo, I kind of realized that maybe another entire zoo built in mid 20th century modernist style was not the um, most exciting thing on my channel and probably not good for me to do another entire zoo like that. So I modified my plans and decided just to do a kind of standard Australian zoo. Uh, had it all worked out, it was going to be a entrance plaza and then areas coming off of that full of Australian animals. And then there'd be a separate area called the islands that would be full of Indonesian animals. But having started building it, I think I did the entrance and a flamingo habitat. And I realized I didn't really want to do a Australian zoo. I was just kind of so desperate to use the Australian animals. So I abandoned that zoo and started building San Bernardino Zoo. And I'm so glad that I did because I'm absolutely loving building this zoo. All the plans that I had for the Australian area are what we're going to be starting today and obviously we've already built the island section that was going to be the other half of that zoo so the history for this area is that this would have been built in the 1930s one of the earliest areas in the zoo some of those original habitats which may have been built by the tecton group still remain and the whole thing has been re-landscaped to bring it up to the sort of ultra modern standard that we have in this zoo this here is the entrance and in the coming weeks we're going to be building some classic habitats and some brand new habitats including one that i've been waiting to build for like a year Year and a half cannot wait to get started on that so let's talk about the entrance then so i'm just doing some lettering here with some kind of vaguely aboriginal kind of detailing on it this will form a big sign over the entrance animals that we're going to be adding in in a second and the whole thing is surrounded by these circular walls i've built using the rusted metal poles from the australia pack which i'm a big fan of but let's move on to something specific what i really want is to highlight this incredible aboriginal artwork which comes as part of the australia pack um, there's the set here which is built onto little rocks and what I want to do is build a huge pile of rocks and make it look like these paintings have been painted directly onto that rock and we're just going to drop in some of these security curbs in front of it to stop the guests from walking onto the paths underneath it. When I first started using the rocks in this game I thought to make things look natural I needed to use loads and loads of different rocks. There's like I don't even know how many 16 different rocks in each um, colour scheme or something like that and I was always trying to use loads of them, but the more I've built, the more I've realized that if you can use as few rocks as possible and just concentrate on spinning them around, getting them into exactly the right place, you get a much more natural look. Um, and the way that I do it, the way that I line them up is to look at the shadows in the rocks and the darker part of the rocks and try and line those up with the rock next to it and just concentrate on the exact little shapes of all the little uh, crevices and things like that to get things to look really natural. Then we're going to move this main painting in at the front, position it so it is vaguely sort of in front of that rock face like so. And then we're going to use a few different types of rock just peeking out from the main rocks at the back to get this to completely seamlessly blend in to the rocks behind it. It's pretty painstaking work, but it is worth it. Once we get this right, this uh, sort of rock display is gonna look really cool. This is gonna be a sort of outbacky kind of red rock display with the rusted metal in the background. But what I want for this area as a whole is to really sort of explore everything that Australia's got to offer. I always kind of think it's funny when people make Australian zoos and they're always set in the outback. The one place you wouldn't build a zoo is the outback. It's like 40 degrees every day. Most of your animals will die within a day and hardly anyone lives there. So you're not going to get any visitors. I think there's like a few sort of small local wildlife centers uh, near sort of population centers or what little population centers there are in the outback. But normally if you're going to build a zoo in Australia, you know, it's going to be in Sydney or somewhere like that. So I want to explore all the different kinds of Australian terrain in this area. So we've got this kind of slightly stereotypical, if I'm going to be honest, Australian display at the front. 
and we're also going to be celebrating the modernist architecture that Australia is known for as well as the sort of rusty metal thrown together kind of outbacky vibe and then we're also going to have forests and jungles in the main area as well to really reflect all the different terrains and biomes that they have over in Australia. One of the other good things about building an Australian area is I finally get to use all the Australian foliage in the game which I occasionally if it doesn't look too out of place I can sort of sneak it into places but um, I hardly ever get to actually use it like this so having a lot of fun throwing around all the foliage from the Oceania category. I'm gonna fill this not too much uh, it should still look pretty kind of dusty but there we go I like that. Let's move on to the animals. The way I want this entrance area to work is to hit the guests with loads of different aspects of Australia all at the same time. So we've got the red desert rock formation that we've built. We've got the kind of cheap and cheerful architecture in the fences. Now we're gonna put some modernism in and we're also gonna hit them with two different animals that are actually part of the entrance. So we're gonna have two exhibit pods here which will form the entrance archway that the guests walk under. On the right hand side here, we're gonna have the death adder and what a cool name for an animal that is. And then on the left hand side, we're gonna have the Eastern blue tongue lizard, which is one of my favorite exhibit animals. The building that we're creating is inspired by a sketch I saw from an architect called David Klink on Instagram absolutely ages ago. And it drawn uh, a building, I've got no idea what it was um, sort of intended for, but it drawn the front and the back of the building side by side and it had this really cool slant on it and I actually misinterpreted it when I first looked at it and thought it was one building with a gap in the middle not realizing that it was just the front and back of the same building that actually inspired me to create a building that actually looks like uh, what I thought I was looking at if that makes sense so we're going to have this slanted modernist looking pod here and then we're going to have another one on the other side that's basically a mirror image of it with an animal in each and then the guests will pass between them to get into the main Australian area. I want this to look really clean, so we're gonna to have to use loads and loads of the smallest plaster pieces in the game to join everything up. I don't want a single uh, pixel of plaster panel poking out the side or anything like that. I want this to look absolutely perfect. So it's gonna take a lot of doing with the plaster panels, and then we're gonna to have to move down to the tiny little plaster bricks as well, and bury a few of those in, just to make sure that the entire design is clean uh, uh, no matter what angle you look at it at. So pretty much done with that now, just a few tiny little bits to fill in. And this is starting to look really nice. And then we're gonna give it a base to stand on as well with some of the other plaster pieces. Um, it's really fun getting back into this kind of uh, modernist design. It's been a while since I've done something as overtly modernist as this and um, I'm really enjoying doing it. The whole area won't look like this. We're gonna have some really naturalistic habitats um, and we're gonna have some 1930s style modernism as well as the ultra modern stuff like this. Let's get the exhibit box in. I forgot they're actually slightly bigger than a four meter cube, these boxes. So we'll have to extend the building a bit um, and then we can squeeze it in and get it in there seamlessly. And then we're gonna start doing some more design work to make this look really attractive. When it's finished, it should not look like an exhibit box inside the building. If you see what I mean, it's gonna be like a window into the building where the exhibit is gonna sit. It's gonna take some doing, but we are definitely gonna get there. And I'm really happy with how this looks when it's finished. As you know, I love working with the exhibits in this game. They get so little love from uh, most creators and I really enjoy it working with them. That's the top sorted. We're gonna put some more concrete across the bottom here to really tie everything together. And also I just spotted one tiny little gap at the top here. So we're gonna put one of the little plaster bricks in and then just move this into place to cover up that gap, make sure everything's perfect. And then we can get our first animal in. So we'll go with the death adder on this side. I'm gonna put two of them in here just to make sure that they're visible. We'll get the exhibit into exactly the right place and spin it round so we get the most appropriate part of it at the front choose what's going to go in here. We might add some custom stuff later and then it's on to the rest of the design. There's two main elements that I want to concentrate on here that are going to go perfectly with the white concrete which is this kind of rusted uh, sign set from the Australia pack and some more gorgeous artwork that gecko there as well. Um, we're going to have the majority of it with the rusted metal so we're going to get this in place and just keep playing with this, move that back there, keep playing with this until we get it completely seamless and it looks like one big kind of sheet of metal with various designs on it. So just keep copying a few of these signs around, making sure everything is covered up. Like we'll move that piece over there, 
We're getting a little bit of Z fighting as well. So we'll go back in and make a few adjustments here and there until we've got this exactly how we want it. There we go. If we just shift this a tiny, tiny pixel, that will solve the problem. I'm gonna drop a koala in as well as a bit of a centerpiece that looks nice and seamless. And now it's time to check out the islands. Yes, remember our animal rescue from a few weeks ago, we brought the last Malayan tapir from Tecton Zoo over to San Bernardino. She has had a little baby. Now we have a little tapir family. How cute is that? No time for franchise masters this week, although I just put out a compilation of all of them. If you missed that, let's get back to the build. So I wanna feature this gecko artwork behind the animals. I think that's gonna look gorgeous, uh, but it's not quite big enough. So what we're gonna do is is copy it behind itself uh, loads of times and keep doing that so that you can't see the geckos on the panels behind it and just keep copying until all you can see is canvas surrounding the the main gecko in the middle and that'll just give the effect of expanding the canvas to completely fill the area behind the um, exhibit and give us the uh, sort of seamless look that we want there we go the final things to do with this exhibit is to turn on the 3D backgrounds because I think that's going to really sit it in and make it look a lot more substantial. And then later on, we'll move the gecko back into place so that it replaces the sort of fake sky at the back. And then it's time to mirror this exhibit to the other side. Sadly, Planet Zoo does not have a mirror tool. So this is going to be a lot of painstaking work to make this basically exactly the same, but facing in the other direction. We need to move everything from the back of the exhibit to the front. Uh, I'll spare you the pain that I went through to do that. And we will skip straight to adding in the blue tongue lizards. So a few um, different options in this particular exhibit, like these nice dead trees. Uh, but basically we're going to have a very similar look to what we have on the other side. Then we'll sort out a sign. I'm going to slightly improve the one that we made earlier. I wasn't 100% happy with it. And then we'll put this on top of the boxes so that we get the archway that the guests are going to walk under to enter the, the full Australian area. We're going to be using the red dirt path as well, which I only used about once before, I think. That really sets the sort of Australian vibe. A few more improvements to the sign, and then we can just finish off the entrance area itself. We'll put some of these beautiful Australian trees and bushes right next to the building so that you can see them growing up behind them, which I really like. We'll put some benches in so that the guests have got somewhere to sit. And then we'll make a nice little garden area here. We'll have to move that sign up a bit so you can see it properly. Um, that looks really nice. And then we need to hide some donation bins in as well, seeing as we're in franchise mode. So I'm going to hide one in there so you can't see it, but the guests can still use it. And then finally, we'll put a vista point in in front of the rocks here so the guests will actually stand here and look at it. And that is the entrance to Australia done. Let's check it out. God, I love the lighting in this game. This looks really nice in the morning light. And the way the white concrete contrasts with the red sand, and all the foliage, it feels really hot. It feels really Australian, I think. Very happy with that. Here's the blue tongue skink looking nice with the gecko in the background. And we've got our first guests into the area as well. This is where we started today. And this is where we are now. A nice little entrance, but we have got a lot of land to fill. And next week, we're going to be building the first of the classic habitats in Australia. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and I'll see you then. Bye.